Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, okay. My name is Kevin. Uh, I work for Open Invention Network to promote patent and graduation for Linux. And actually, before the job, I work for uh, Canonical to promote Ubuntu services about eight years. So since that, in that eight years, I've been experienced a lot of talking, discussion with the lawyer, between two lawyers, right? Customer lawyer and our lawyer. So it's kind of, to me, it's kind of difficult job because uh, spend about 30% of the time but in between two lawyers. At the end, I think lawyer actually decide if we can do the job or not do the project. So uh, yesterday we heard about four freedom of uh, to use open source, to run, to study, to redistribute, and to improve. But how and who to protect the freedom is a license. Right, so license to protect the the four freedoms. But actually, what there are about eighty different licenses, OSI approved license, and to protect uh, our freedom in very different way. If you are very copy left people, you might want to use HGPL, GPL, LGPL, or if you are very open mind, MIT, BSD, or Apache, or something in between. So there are many ways to contribute your work, and so I would suggest any developer, if you really like to use open source, you should read the license before you use the code. Otherwise, at the end, you, you might end up something you don't like. So here we talk about license, and I guess most of people know a bit of license, but where is the pattern in here. So a patent is a set of uh, ex exclusive rights, as Austin said, and granted to a specific person in a specific time uh, in the detailed publication. Okay. So at the beginning of the patent is a good thinking, right? So I've something very good, and then I write it down and then share it to other people. But in a certain time, I can get a specific right. However, since I think at this stage, patent becomes something like you file a patent, I file a patent, and then we fight. So for, here is one example. Okay, uh, I work for Canonical, so I knew it, it's a bit about Ubuntu. So Ubuntu announced they have a kind of uh, Ubuntu Edge, so you can use uh, your, your phone, connect to your screen, then you can have a big screen. We call uh, Ubuntu Edge. They published in 2013. Last year, Microsoft did the same thing. Very similar. Microsoft continued 2015, and then since Microsoft love Linux, they fire patent. Uh, let me give me one. Here you go. So they file pattern that, uh, for the detail, if you are interested, anyway, it's uh, from a phone, and they can get to the screen, to a big screen. So let's explain. Although you have something already public, but some, someone might still file pattern. And so to answer someone's question previously, how is that possible? Uh, give me back. Okay. So for BSD MIT, uh, the the entire license does not even mention any word about pattern, which means well we cannot honestly I think we cannot blame them, blame the writer, because back to twenty thirty years ago, they don't exactly know what what license will go right. So they do they do their best. For GPL v2, LGPL v2, and it's not very clear. Well, they have a patent clause, but not, not, not good enough to protect uh, people on the patent. For the newer license from G, from Apache v2, GPL v, v3, HGPL v3, is content how they grant patent and how they receive patent back. So it's much, much, much more ready. Uh, 
but it still cannot protect uh, like for example if you are a developer uh, I mean I mean open source developer I'm not I might I might have some good idea I already file a pattern but you didn't know and then you just open your source that might against my pattern right so how is that that's still an issue so we, I can show you the I can show you the pattern class in uh, uh, where it is pattern class in MIT. If you can read, it, it's very short. If you can find if I find find the pattern, nothing there. Okay, nothing there in MIT in Apache. Well, no. Give me a second. In GPL v2, yes, there are some, but not, you, you can see the structure is not uh, very precise. And then if you see GPL v3, they have an entire, give me a second, they have an entire session talking about pattern. How to grant to the uh, developer how to protect user. So to me GPL v3 is the more about the, the primary change between GPL v2 and v3 is pattern and anti table. So that's if you know license you will know uh, what I'm talking about. So the, the new license is much ready uh, to protect uh, user to use the uh, to, to use the software if if some pattern behind the software. But how about, but that's it, that problem is still there because a lot of history is just not easy to change. Okay, ah, let's use here. So th this data I, I got from a black duck. They scan all, not all, but many, many open source and to get their licenses. So right now it's still 25% is on, G on GPL v2 and MIT is about 19%, BSD 7%, GPL v, uh, G LGPL is 5%. So summary of that, the total of the license does not cover pattern well are uh, about more than 50%, and which is not easy to, to, uh, to remove because most of the GPL v2 um, uh, most of the software related to hardware layer is about GPL v2, so it's not easy to change it to GPL v3 because that's, uh, that, that's, that's just where they are. Okay. So that's, that's why we think there might be something that from our own point of view, there's some, something we can do to improve or to prevent the pattern war. Okay. So this is where we are. Okay, our company actually for, uh, founded by IBM, Google, NEC, Philips, Red Hat, SUSE, and Sony. So everyone has a, I, I guess, I think everyone has a similar <coughs> issue, right? Like company like IBM, Google, NEC, they have a long history in developing uh, very fundamental technology. They own the pattern. But can you imagine if IBM come to sue you that you use Linux to buy their pattern? They can't, right, because they are IBM. How about Google? Can Google come sue to you? You use their patent on Linux? Probably not, right? I don't think they, those big companies, they will do. But those patent is there. The only thing they can do is defense. Once, if they want to defense themselves, they would, they would want to enlarge the defense uh, coverage. So we uh, come together and to start to work. And so our idea is. It's not, well, some people don't like pattern, but our idea is pattern is already there. It's the, the whole, the old regulation, the old law is already there. It's nothing we can change. But if fundamental, on the fundamental Linux system, if we can work together, the, the, fun, the base will be very secure and safe. And then on top of that, people can still develop a US open source solution or closed source solution, and you can compete and make things better. That's our, that's our philosophy. Uh, so ON, now we have about 2,000 members join. And everyone join ON, 
it's actually free, free to join for everyone. And so the only thing you need to agree is you cannot assert pattern to against the members. The cause all, all the member, all the licensee, all they also grant you the the pattern, right? So it's a kind of cross licensing. That's the only thing we we ask. So you don't sue each other. And also you are free to use all and about one thousand patterns. Those patterns read on e commerce and security cloud mobility and everything. So that's that's our idea. So if every everyone can agree together that don't sue each other, so the pattern on Linux will no longer be an issue. So here are we're about two thousand licensees right now, but it, here um it's more about open source project, open source ERP, uh, uh, BP, uh, uh, BPX, database, uh, web-based solution, and like Docker, and like Twitter, Mozilla. Everyone all agree. From the enterprise side, uh, we have four manufacturer, uh, telco, like, and car maker, and networking, Provider and and then it's cloud and then it's a cheap vendor. So we are trying to ask everyone to join our ecosystem. So in addition to that, we also publish uh, a lot of uh, prior art. To answer some question in a previous session, how we do that? Okay, we have a the web page and then you can see the defensive publication so I give you one example right so here is about 250 uh, pre prior art uh, a publication we already did it the specific one like this one is for safe okay. it's uh, actually that's a that's a, a PhD uh, that's a sage uh, when, sh when she did a PhD study in uh, in 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 his early life, so this is his uh, study. So we what we did is kind of very honest. It's simple or not simple. We convert his publication into prior art, which is much easier for a lawyer, because uh, a lot of uh, a research public publication is easy for research people, but not easy for for lawyers. So we do that. After we do that. We also work with IP.com to put all the publication in IP.com. And IP.com is the database which a lot of U, uh, US uh, patent examiner, they will search. They will, they will search the database if, the, if some prior art is already there and to, when they examine the patent, uh, uh, patent application. So we all do together, and so if some open source developer, you have a good idea that you don't want to file a patent, but you are kind of concerned some company will file a patent based on your technology, and you can work with us. So we can help you to write the uh, a prior art, and which a lawyer can understand. Right? Okay. I think that's most of the thing I will talk. Let me see anything else. Just, just, just. Okay. All right. Okay, that's about my talk. Any question? Uh, so it seems like these solutions still are kind of like mutually assured destruction. Like they're, you know, like the, the, the concept of depends on whether or not be having patents that scares the other ones off from like ever dropping out of this organ this, this organization was what's called the, the OIM, right? Yeah. It, it, isn't that sort of like gonna lead to more patents and never get actually building down the this this this, this arsenal of weapons that we have? Uh, how can we ever get to, to a situation where no uh, patents. patents no longer exist on software, if not anything? Because uh, like, it's really only like the previous speaker was saying in certain jurisdictions that this is like that wrong, right? Like in India and other places, it's not the case. Yeah, a lot of countries they start to think and software should not be patentized. India is a good example. New Zealand 
some several states in the in the United they also have the same but that take time to change government one by one. Right? It, so that's a could be an intermediate solution before that stage comes. Right, my my, 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 I guess my question is more like is this is, shouldn't you see this as sort of like a step in like cementing that system? Because you're getting like all these companies in, all these huge organizations that took time. I mean you know, software fans have been a known problem for decades. Yeah. So I mean it takes a lot of time, but like come on, that's been a lot of time. Well, so is there, like a, is, there, is there also associated with like a movement towards like building down? Now? I mean, maybe if I could add one comment here, please. this is not going to be a permanent thing because the patents have a lifetime anyway. So once it, it's got 17 or 20 year lifetime, so even though those companies or whoever is a member and they have placed their stuff within OIN, there is an expiry date anyway, at which point it doesn't matter. So I think when more countries and when jurisdictions stop, Stop issuing software patents. So, in the long tail, you know, it probably it will eventually uh, OIN would have served the purpose of making sure that you know the, all the other things that are the knock on effects of a patent in that litigation doesn't happen. But that take time, maybe next 20 years. Yeah. yeah. So, he's got a, Kevin has a job for 20 years. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, my, my question is, if a OIN member has a patent, uh, mm -hmm. would it be obligatory for it to let other OIN members use their patent as well? Okay. Our coverage is only on Linux system. We have a well-defined, I think right now, 2,030, 335 packages. As long as your patent read on the packages, mm -hmm. that will apply. So we will need to see if your patent read on the package or not. Yeah. So if there's some upper, uh, like user space pattern, mm -hmm. not probably not, yeah, because that's how, that's where company will compete, and which is not easy to escalate to cross license. Yes? Would it be good to like, take some other institution, like, I don't know, like Free Software Foundation, right? something, and like, like trying to really like patent stuff that comes out of our <coughs> open source community? With the help of like a really independent institution that just has like one interest, and then building a pile of like IP that you can actually use to, yeah, to protect yourself against like like things. Okay. So far, I think Free Software Foundation and Software Freedom Law Center, they are more folk. Their primary strength is on copyright. <laughs> so we actually work together. If there is some copyright issue, or we will work together with them. If there is uh, a patent issue, they will forward to us. And then at the back end, we, we actually work together with Linux Foundation, Free Software Foundation, and Software Free Dental Center, all together. But it's a good idea if you want to build your own defensive pool. I mean, lots of companies do that. Like, if you look at the unilateral pledges from Red Hat, for example, it's a promise that was made uh, in 99. And it's a good thing to do. They build their own portfolio. They probably have, I don't know, 1,000 patents, 800 patents, whatever it is. And they're pretty focused on what they file. And anybody, they pledge that anything that you, as long as you behave well, you can use their patents. And I think that's a, that's a good model. Unilateral pledges are complementary to what OIM does. They're complementary to any other activity that you could become involved in in the community. Uh, you know, so I think there's, there's an evolution of thinking and uh, around how projects are managed, how they should be spun up, and how intellectual property, uh, particularly patenting, should play, play a part so that you don't have mischief. Because we're getting to a point where people are going to start misbehaving. We've been monitoring projects like, uh, like OpenStack. Uh, because OpenStack, to me, is, it's only done under an Apache license. The Apache license has a contributor provision around, uh, around patents. It's not particularly fulsome, um, and I think everyone who you know got involved in OpenStack and organized it, from the Rackspace people down down, recognized that it was kind of a band-aid, um, and more is going to be necessary because what we're concerned about is people inventing because they deliver on a, on a platter to you because the way that project's organized, what's core? Every six months they'll introduce a new release of core technology. If you file patents on core technology. 
you, you, you sit around for five or six years, everybody in the project is standardized in terms of the cloud of the future on partic that particular core technology to build their, their, their functionality and, and, and products, you basically are setting up a toll booth. And so what we're doing is trying to identify those patents and then going after them to reduce their claim scope or get them to be rejected if their applications or if they're already granted, get them to be invalidated under IPR. So that's something we do on the, you know, quietly uh, because we want to make sure that people aren't gaming the system and that the, uh, what I consider to be a non-uniform level of authenticity about companies who participate in open source be uh, not manifest itself in, uh, in holdup down the road. Who's, who's we in this context? Sorry. Open Invention oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry. didn't give it Yes. Back. So, software licenses are not the same thing as software patents. That's different law. Okay. Different law. Uh, license, patent, and the trademark. If you, if you see these three law actually guide the software. <laughs> I think there's one more comment. One of the challenges we have is the, and this is where Richard Stallman and I, I, I agree with him on, which is the, uh, the confusion of the phrase intellectual property. Because when someone says, I have some IP or I'm, I'm concerned about IP, uh, exactly which part of it? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, is it, is it, are you talking about copyright? Are you talking about patents? Are you talking about trademarks? Which one are you talking about? Because yeah. you have to know which one it is. Uh, so I always, whenever anybody talks about intellectual property, I say, you know what, I have no idea what you're talking about. Which specific thing are you uh, yeah, we're, about? we're talking about patents, to be absolutely crystal clear. But yeah. it's, it's good. I mean, it's part of Richard's focus. He has to be very nice. clear about everything he's talking about. That's why when I say open, he never likes, you know, if I don't say FOSS, if I don't say, you know, <laughs> Free. GNU Linux versus Linux is Linux, and be very clear about what, what each does every time I describe it. He gets a little angst, uh, with, uh, you know. but it's good. He, he's correct. I mean, being precise is a very good thing. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you. All right. Thank you.